Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters, especially of the path of knowledge. And we carry out the path of knowledge program. And today also we are going to start with the test of Siddhant. So you will be given 10 questions and you will need to score more than 50% to reach the step number four of the program. And meanwhile, everybody just enjoy the test. Do not write the answers. We'll discuss them after the exam. So these are your questions. All the best. Uh, okay. Um, I might I might take some time to think about the answer, uh, depending on the question. So the first question, what is the final result or destination of path of knowledge? Well, uh, the final uh, goal of path of knowledge is to uh, remove all ignorance and um, come back home and realize our true nature. Um, uh, Self-realization or you can say the knowledge of the experiencer, is, that is the goal. So the second question, uh, if there is perfection in the existence, why is there so much ignorance? There is perfection. Well, there is a potential for there to be uh, ignorance. There is a potential for ignorance to rise. So therefore, we, we can say that that's why there is ignorance. Although there is no why. Um, and if ignorance arises, then then that is also perfection arising a, as ignorance. Names and third question: Names and forms are always present with the essence. Then why are they false? Yes, uh, names and forms are uh, always present with the essence, but they are false because they because names and forms constantly keep on changing. So on path of knowledge, we have a criteria that uh, everything that is changing is false. And uh, that which is that does not the essence does not change the forms and the subsequent names that are derived from those forms, they keep on changing. Fourth question, existence has no form or has no form or start and end, then how is it known via direct experience? The most fundamental thing about existence is that uh, it exists. So non-existence is impossible. The forms keep on changing, but uh, existence will always be there. Existence has no form or start and or start and end then how is it known via direct experience well it is our direct experience that things exist that forms exist so so their existence comes first uh, being is uh, existence is first and the uh, that is followed by an experience uh, fifth question experiencer is everywhere true or false Yes, this is, uh, well, experiencer is non-local, so um, so it's not uh, limited, uh, so it, it is nowhere and it is everywhere, so yes, this is true. Why are all experiences localized in the head? So all experiences are experiences of the mind. So, uh, so we perceive things uh, using our five senses, and uh, all experiences are mental experiences. Six, why are all experiences localized in the head? Now, actually, this uh, uh, assumption that the experiences are localized in the head is false. All experiences are actually non-local. They appear to be localized in the head for humans. 
but upon further investigation um, the all experiences are actually non local so the seventh question is what takes form uh, the experience the experiencer uh, takes form uh, the experiencer which is formless um, that that takes form the the essence of all form is the experiencer so yes the experiencer that it is ex it is the experiencer that takes form yes that that's my answer eighth one how do we know that the vibrations exist well uh, because of the change and uh, uh, change is binary because we only experience change uh, experience in in fact experience is change so and the most basic element of change is uh, is is a duality of uh, vibration it rises and falls like a like a sine wave so we can uh, reduce down all changes to uh, some some basic uh, a basic vibration which rises and forms in in the form of a wave in which world do we find the layers of the memory in which world do we find the layers of the memory well we find layers of the memory in all the worlds well i mean i don't know about other worlds but uh, in this world uh, yes we do find layers of the memory where 10th question where does the evolution of the layers lead to um evil the evolution of layers eventually leads to dissolution so yes that's the final layer where the um where the experience uh, dissolves into the experiencer so it it is already dissolved so yes that's um i would like to come back to the fourth question i i don't think i answered it correctly existence has no form or start and and then how do we then how is it known be a direct experience that's the basic thing we can say about anything is that it exists so that's our direct experience that uh, um uh, that things exist and then lack of existence is impossible uh, in the same way lack of ex experience is impossible so yes that's so yes yes guruji i tried my best so thank you okay very good and you have scored 7.5 out of 10 which is a very good score actually and most of your answers were very good uh, and now you are in the step number 4 of the program where you will need to uh, start the awareness practice in the waking state and uh, for 3 months we'll observe you keep sending the weekly reports from the program itself there are some videos that explain this practice and uh, now we are going to discuss these questions a little bit in very short although most of the answers were correct only one answer was incorrect which was surprisingly very easy but got in an incorrect but anyway number 1 was what is the final result of the destination of the path of knowledge he got half marks here and you can guess why because the path of knowledge does not lead to any kind of knowledge it leads to agnostic position agnosticism where the knowledge is discarded in favor of silence this is known to very few people because they are at the starting point of the path of knowledge as you reach the end which will come very soon you will find that there is nothing worth knowing there is something which is worth being which you already are that is the end of the path of knowledge it it actually self destroys in the end very beautiful number 
if there is perfection in the existence why is there is why there is so much ignorance full marks ignorance and knowledge they are needed to complete the existence without ignorance we cannot cannot call it complete number 3 names and forms are always present with the essence why are then why are they false full marks again they are present but they are present as changing the na- their nature is changing i mean when we cannot even say that na- their nature is changing they are seen as changing so people can say that and the clay pot is always present with the form of pot and name of pot then why are you saying that it is not there because the clay can be present in any other form also if it is present in 100 forms then which is the true form that is the question that is where the logic comes in if you simply observe the clay pot in isolation you would think that there is only one name and form then why are you saying it is false that will be the question but look at all the forms of the clay and ask this question which one is the true form of the clay and then you will find in this metaphor because this is only metaphor example that there is no true form your intellect will say no 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 this form is true no that is true now tomorrow there is some other form which one then you will get negative knowledge here that no the forms do not define my experience of clay pot they are made on the spot by the senses because change the sense and the form will change yes change the language that means change the mind change your knowledge about the names and it will change so they are all false which is the right name for the pot in english or hindi or sanskrit or chinese you can say all of them are right but in philosophy the truth is one not many anyway so probably i'm explaining it too much you all know these things i i wanted to make this point that when we are born in this world what do we see we see a consistent world this 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 exists objects people animals they exist emotions thoughts exist and because we never see anything which is totally different from these these are the forms taken by the existence in the case of the physical world and we do not get any opportunity to to, to see anything more than this and that is why this belief becomes very solid and this is true this is how everything is but all you need to see is that these forms are changing even though there is a consistency imposed on the forms and then it becomes obvious that we are looking at something which is false illusion so number 4 existence has no form or start and end then how is it, is it known by that direct experience so he tried and he is effort was very good uh, but he tries tried two times still he got only half marks because this is a very tricky question i am going to ask this in the satsang anybody has a better answer although his answer <laughs> is possible that's why he got half marks good try satya is saying by being here and now the definition of the existence is experience and the experiencer or you can say combine them into one the experiencing is it not here and now and nobody will say no everybody will say yes this is how it is this is how the existence is known by being here and now so satya is satya is 100% right in philosophical language we say it is self evident no evidence is needed how can we say something is self evident when its negation actually proves it if we try to say there is no existence what happens this words are heard these words become the experience and they are heard by you know ultimately you can say roughly they are heard by the experiencer now denial proved it that is the hallmark of self evident things paramjit is saying we can never know the start or end only what is not there is known through direct experience and gram is saying because we are it yes very good answer <laughs> i am the existence look existence is confirming it existence is affirming it using this form this little human form now do we need direct experience of some kind of form or its start or its end do we need to look at the objective experience what is the question saying why can't we see the existence as an object because objects have form 
Objects have a start, objects have an end, but look, the existence has none of these, so it should not be there. That is what the faulty logic is saying. But uh, yes, it is not there as an object, it is not there. It is that, the ground on which all the objects are present, all the experiences are present. Siddhant is saying existence is before we perceive it, yes. It is not a subject matter of perception. You can say it is the perceiver using some other words, you see, not our standard terminology, not, not the perceived, but the perceiver. And whatever it perceives is also itself, its illusory forms. That is the essential knowledge, isn't it? So the knowledge of the existence is the essential knowledge and it is self-evident. Nothing is needed to prove it. Anyhow, let's go forward. But yes, Siddhant, you should contemplate more on the essential knowledge. Contemplate about this thing. Number five, experiencer is everywhere, true or false. Actually, he got full marks for this because he said true, but he then explained that it is non-local. So once you say non-local, you do not, you should not say true or false. That is the trick in the question. Why do we say it is everywhere? Because that is the general language, you see. That is the, you can say, an inaccurate language, in a common language we say like this. Oh, it's everywhere, omnipresent. But what is the technical language? What is the language of the philosophy? It is non-local. Means the words pointing to locations do not apply to it, to the experiencer. Not only to the experiencer, to the experience, to the existence and all the fundamentals. As soon as you use the word where and when and the, these do, do not apply here. They apply to the objects. Siddhant is saying, I said there is nowhere and everywhere. Yes, that is why you got full marks. I am impressed by that. This should not be taken as true that it is everywhere. But it is also not false. So that was the trick in the question. The bottom line is, you see, that the places appear to it. It is not found in places. Anyhow, poetically we say that it is everywhere. Like it can appear as anything. So what do we call it? Omnipotent. It can create anything. <laughs> but that, is, that leads to so much confusion, isn't it? That leads to ignorance. These kind of, this kind of language is not really accurate. So what is the accurate form of that omnipotence? I can appear to myself as any illusory form. That is the correct way to say it. That is how it is said in the Advait. But you see, systems have become corrupt, corrupt, corrupt. And um, there is problem now. Okay, next question. Why are all experiences localized in the head? And his answer was right. Uh, experiences are also non-local. There is simply this illusion. And it is simply, you can say, a characteristic of the humans that appears like this. Now, uh, there is interesting thing, you know, those who are doing the projections, practicing the projected states, they will see that uh, sometimes there is no head, no body. You are simply floating point. And then this belief breaks that experiences are in the head. Because when there is no head, where will you put your experiences? So that kind of practice is very much effective in removing all this ignorance about the experiences. You will know what is illusion when you step into the illusion. What takes forms? And he said, I take form, the experiencer takes form, which is right. Here we have risen to the level of non-duality actually. In the duality, we say the experiencer has no form. We have separated it from the experience. But in the non-duality, we say, that it is me only which is taking the forms. That is correct to say. Then you should not mix the levels of duality and non-duality there. No, no, yesterday you said, I don't have any form. How can I take form today? No. <laughs> Climb to the another level here. From here, it is all me. This should be kept in mind when you are attempting the exam that some questions they are asked from a non-dual point of view. You should use your intelligence to decide. Should I answer it from non-dual or dual or both like this? Then you'll get full marks. Number eight, how do we know that the vibrations exist? Full marks again. Number nine, in which world do we find the layers of the memory? He got it wrong. You know, this is the only answer he got wrong. Siddhant, can somebody tell me? <laughs> yes, Paramjit is right. World, body and mind are in the memory. He got confused a little bit. 
any other answers any difference of opinion do this these layers of the memory reside in some special world out there above the above in the sky so anyway we have the answer here by paramjit very nice so remember the diagram of the layers in one one of the videos i don't remember which one is that but uh, we extend the layers and we show that look the globes are drawn little earths are drawn on that extended layers and then we show that the senses and the, and the bodies you know whatever is called a body the layer will appear as a body in that case and whatever it, the senses are sensing in that layer that will appear as a world so all the layers have their corresponding worlds you can say like this roughly it is not so easy but you have been given a little bit of idea of what is happening what is a world what is a body how to know them in terms of the layers in the memory you have been given this kind of little bit of idea starting point in the program but yes it is not wise to say that the layers appear in some kind of world some kind of dimension number 10 where does the evolution of the layers lead to he got half marks because he said to the dissolution which is half right isn't it there is a final layer the dissolved mind now why did i cut half mark there can somebody guess what is the complete answer here the half answer was given you know half of the answer was correct what is the complete answer anybody gram is saying there is no purpose so they don't lead anywhere very nice very right yes because the end point will imply that you see you are evolving to the dissolution but no there is no purpose paramjit is saying evolution ends and starts over you are also right very correct it's a looping process you know it goes in circle cyclic process vinay is saying there is no start and end to evolution it leads nowhere exactly yes same answer as graham so we have a majority <laughs> anybody else madhuri is saying there is change only it is operated in cycle yes cyclic so siddhant was half right it does go to dissolution starts again <laughs> there is no dissolution for the brahman there can be dissolution for the jiva or you can say the individual is dissolved and the individuals are dissolved and appear and dissolve in cyclic way till infinity this is also not known to many people because you see when they start the guru tells them look your goal is dissolution liberation complete annihilation nirvana this is very frightening <laughs> to some people but yes some students they want this kind of thing and we also tell look you are going to be liberated very soon in one hour and that is all you see simply a drama the reality is there are no goals no ends no beginnings nothing is achieved it is beautiful and perfect as it is nothing needs to happen in the whole nothing needs to happen and this whatever looks like an evolution is simply a dream part of the dream yes there are seeds of evolution and dissolution madhuri said otherwise everything would have dissolved by now see given the infinite amount of time the logic says that if it were a single you know one way process then everything would have already dissolved by now it is present since eternity why are all the individuals not yet dissolved completely what are they waiting for you see they cannot do that new new ones keep appearing from the bottom <laughs> so a simple logic you see people should think about these things i am the brahman in which all these bubbles are arising and disappearing it is very clearly mentioned in the scriptures also whatever arises is just like bubbles waves forms rise and fall anyway the liberation is very useful concept so liberation from the ignorance only yes siddhant is saying humans are more evolved according to humans yes according to creatures above us we are simply cockroaches so everything is relative here nothing is evolved nothing is non evolved Graham is saying, "I don't understand how anyone wants dissolution. If it happened, who would know it? Yes, the one that wants will be gone. So this fire is, you know, started in the heart of the student simply to make him progress towards the non-individuated layers. And nobody remains to know that I am dissolved. So the the logic does not really apply here. It is a matter of 
choice and uh, even if you don't choose it it will happen dissolution will happen and even if you strongly desire that it should remain dissolved like this you know finally achieved it it will won't remain dissolved new forms will keep appearing from that which got dissolved so ultimately individual has no choice whatever is happening is happening just remember it is whole and perfect already whatever you think whatever you desire whatever is your goal has no importance at all know this and be happy paramjit is saying all there is existence experiencer experiences and unification of experience experiences is experiencing so what is mother nature or devi is it single experience combination or experiencing or entity okay all that which can be all that which is manifested will be called devi in some other paths you see like you said tantra path some other devotional paths the manifested part of the existence is not called illusion it is called devi or the goddess very simple so we have one question from uh, chitranjan is experience an incessant blinking of experience or consciousness experience can be explained as a vibration in the existence which if you want you can call blinking because you know it goes on and off in binary fashion that is the answer very simple answer so we have finished exam questions review of the exam questions and very good attempt by siddhant you have very good potential continue on the path siddhant is asking what is space according to you an illusion <laughs> one word answer illusion a concept and as we discussed in the video on space which is not in your program it is in the transmission series it is created as a double illusion in the video on in the transmission series i have called it a way to arrange information in the mind that is all space is it is due to memory a way to arrange information and yes you can arrange information in various ways like one after the other which will become one dimensional space right like in mathematics you can arrange the information in rows and columns which will be two dimensional it will need two points two coordinates to describe what is where which experience is happening where but you can arrange it in three dimensions also and more than that if you want it totally depends on how the mind arranges the information and the resulting experience will be experience of space like your room how neatly everything is arranged uh, by that i mean even if you throw the, your stuff around in the room and your mother is not happy with you still the mind manages to arrange everything correctly the location is the result of this arrangement a map is created of all the information and the way it is perceived will be called space and you can see that it is an irreducible according to this definition tanmatra and that is why the akash will be called a tanmatra panchabhuta it's interesting isn't it time is not called tanmatra <laughs> space is called, because you see they are one the space and time are one arrangements in the memory of information i know this is very very technical so go and watch the video of the space again is there any philosophy indian philosophy which includes time as the element does anybody know because you see nothing seems to exist without time so why was it not included as one of the elements gram is saying she was drum no that drum signifies vibrations actually not time same way the krishna's flute and vishnu's the what is that called shell sea shell many of the deities have that thing something which vibrates they keep it in their hands conch yes sweet is saying maybe it's a byproduct of space itself yes actually sci- modern science proved it they are one space and time are not separate siddhant says space seems to be unchanging but that was again proven wrong by theory of relativity and all it has a geometry they say which changes according to gravity so it seems to be unchanging that is an illusion even there that can be said about the time that you know there is always time but it goes away in sleep it changes in dream there is a different kind of time in the dream because the memories have changed the experience has changed very simple <laughs> there are so many things that seem to be unchanging but um, complete illusions 
Siddhant is asking, archaeologist says, say humans originated in Africa. Do you agree? I agree with this thing that the evidence is present in Africa. That which that much we can agree on, isn't it? Can we say it is true? Who knows? Then the migration theory is there, which is based on the genetics. But uh, that is controversial. Migration did happen, but uh, was it all from the Africa? That is controversial. So I am not ar archaeologist. Actually, they are not archaeologists. They will be called paleontologist. Paleontologist. Correctly, archaeologists they are they go on up to the civilized time probably that is that is called the archaeology. But uh, when you go beyond the civilization, then that will be paleontology, something like this. So, what is the traditional view? You know, and you don't need to agree with this thing. Even I don't agree, but this is very interesting that uh, different races of the humans appeared since the beginning of the earth this is <laughs> this is the traditional view hundreds of races of humans have gone through we have gone through them it is amazing siddhant is asking did humans just manifest on different parts on earth because conditions were right no 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 humans did not manifest they evolved they evolved from previously existing animals and yes it is possible that they got extinct and only one gene remained, one, you know, one species remained. Not one, I think, probably five or six remained in the last extinction, last cycle of time. And they migrated and they mixed. Why do we find so much similarity in the human genetics? There are hardly any species of humans. Whatever we call races are not species because they are genetically identical. Very tiny difference. Why has that happened? Like everything in the history, we do not do not have any proof. Only imagination, only theories. It happened because they all mixed with each other. The humans are much older than what your historians or you know archaeologists or all the scientists tell you. They are much older and they are mixed very well with each other. The differences are <laughs> where they could not mix properly. And how could they mix? Because the globe was always one. Since the beginning of the history, humans traveled a lot. They are like migrating birds. Like these days we stay at one place and die at that place. That, that was not the thing. They were hunting, gathering kind of people. And which meant continuous movement. Especially from the north part to the south. Because the, you know, the snow happens in the north and they move every year to the south. Some of them stay back. They go even more south. So on, you see, some find new lands and they move to new lands and so they mixed with each other. Right now also the same thing is happening in countries where, you know, they allow free, you can say, citizenships, you will find a lot of mixture happening. Like in New Zealand, let us say, it's a new country. What are the races in New Zealand? They have all mixed now. New countries like Canada, they are mixing and it happened so quickly. 50, 60, 70 years, 100 years, let us say. 100 years is nothing in the history of humans. When this kind of mixture happened in 100 years, given a million year or 2 million year, what is possible? A lot is possible, isn't it? So this is my opinion. <laughs> I have an opinion on everything and it, it is always stranger than what your schools teach. That is how... People on the path of knowledge are. They are not satisfied with the knowledge that is fed by somebody else. We want to know. We want to find out. So there are even more uh, controversial theories. You can say conspiracy theories that there were only monkeys on this planet. And some people came and they genetically changed them, made them into humans. That is one theory and so on, you see that you will find many. You can say some paranormal or non-physical intervention was made to make the evolution of the humans quicker and it was a uh, kind of um, manipulated, the earth was manipulated to become a more you know, suitable school for evolution where the higher beings can take birth and burn out their karmic uh, storage. Like this there are theories. Satya is asking reptilian theory. I don't know reptilian, but uh, there are theories like this. 
and there is a kind of logical conclusion there that just like we manipulate the animals we um, take the cows and uh, the chicken and so on you see even the species of the plants like mangoes and all we manipulate them to become better according to our criteria of what is better and uh, same way the more evolved species where physical or non physical does not matter you see everything is non physical they must have taken some interest and they should must have manipulated humans because it looks like you know some of the events in the history they look like magic like appearance of bipedalism or appearance of language appearance of ability to speak and technology it looks like that it appeared and suddenly disappeared then new technology appeared then it disappeared something like this is seen in the history but uh, i'll tell you the correct thing what is the right conclusion that nobody knows this is the truth the truth is nobody knows only imaginary stories are there there is no point in knowing also why it is a dream whatever you know about the dream is always false it can be known in any way possible what are we doing we are collectively dreaming you can say like this that uh, this greater memory has a dream and uh, it simply appeared according to advait <laughs> the dreams appear with everything in place the history is also placed already placed in there in the dream which must be your own experience that when you dream in the night the scene arrives with the whole history behind it you do not doubt even for a second that there is no history of my dream you can if you dream about your children and your relatives yes he is this much years old so he must have born at that point my house looks you know new so probably this is the year number this and like this even in lucid dream you will find a history behind your scene his madhuri has some clip i mean screenshot at present we believe that only one species existing and three races but they all got mixed due to migration yes it is all a mixture the race is you know divided based on totally subjective and arbitrary criteria i was looking at a video by somebody on youtube i think he it was neil tyson of usa a very famous scientist he said in africa itself there are 20 races if you make a very strict criteria of race you will find in africa itself there are 20 races of humans like he said pygmies are the shortest and the ethiopians are the tallest and there is you know one which is fastest there is one which is slowest one which is darkest and one which is fairest so on you see so how is that possible only three races by the way there are not three officially there are five or six so how is that possible it, there is no race really there is continuation of a mixture gray scale in india also we have so many races <laughs> india is the biggest racist country in the world the mixture of all kinds so shant is saying human mind cannot conceive of a new thought by itself that is right why are you saying this i mean i forgot about which point did you say that so i was saying in this dream everything comes ready made you can even say that the future is ready made because there is no time it's a play script is written so on there are many beliefs you see they are all wrong according to me that is what the first question was no that what is the final result of path of knowledge when you are on the path of knowledge you must say that i don't know it then nothing can be known probably that is what sushant is saying nothing will be known don't even try like gautam buddh said don't think about all these things the maya it will give you a headache nothing is certain you can argue about the history you can argue about all this you know where did humans appear and all like siddhant was asking pointless where do you want them to appear tell me <laughs> illusion is like an accountant have you heard that joke we have a little bit of time and there are no questions so i'll tell you the joke one day there was an interview for the post of accountant so when scientist appeared in the interview he said look according to my formulas and calculation you now the question was this is the balance sheet tell me the final value how much profit or loss scientist said look according to formula and all this is the value 
and then some historian appeared in the interview and he said according to this book and that book according to the previous past 5 years projections and so on this is the truth this is the prophet and then a real accountant experienced person appeared for the interview and he was asked what is the final profit what is the balance of the balance sheet and he said how much do you want it to be <laughs> so maya is the accountant how much you want it to be what kind of history you want just tell me how many facts how many truths you want they can be made available to you sushant is saying yes in uh, what we say as imagination was implanted various concepts technologies etc yes so it's a play you see and it is simply a time killing discussion to talk about history or future or past or this world that world tell me what do you want it to be i'll make it for you this is the devi saying so enjoy play with her why don't indians keep any history you know our history is written by somebody else the attackers and whatever history was there was turned into stories because they knew that you know anything is possible and whatever you write as history will be changed by those who rule so whatever history and whatever archaeology you see is actually opinions of the people who govern you that much is certain they are based on their ignorance their desires to control people so which history should i consider there is no need consider the present what do i need to do in present i have appeared in this dream or the dream has appeared before me as a human form what do i need to do now that is most important whatever these strange names and all the theories completely useless chit is asking what is the literal meaning of mithya it is false not true some people say it's ardh satya i have we have no control over what people say isn't it and if i say something it has no importance at all just like all other people knowledge and the truth will not come from people this is the basic rule in the path of knowledge do not make people your source of knowledge find out the valid means of knowledge what are the valid means of knowledge can you tell me no <laughs> guru is also a person yes sushant is right direct experience and intellect own direct experience yes so all these questions about what people say and what is this and what is the meaning of this word they will be useless once you are properly on the path so try to walk on the path systematically otherwise you will remain trapped in this kind of ignorance forever because where do we describe what is the valid means what is the meaning of truth what is the meaning of maya where do we describe all these things on the path of knowledge so knowing the uh, answer to one question or what people say will not make you progress only systematic study so i know newcomers they have this scavenging habit go to one person ask one question go to other person ask another question go to this video and get a little bit from there that is scavenging behavior it is not going to make you rich earn the knowledge systematically take up a path take up a guru start studying step by step then there is some hope so it looks like we have discussed a lot today and there are not many questions so we'll conclude today's satsang here a little bit early and uh, i'll see you next time thank you everybody for attending the satsang